Hello, my name is Chris Woodward and thank you for joining me for this OrangoDB 3.5 feature introduction video. Today I'll be introducing a new enterprise feature called Smart Joins. Smart Joins will be a new addition to the existing cluster feature set offered by OrangoDB, which already includes the OrangoDB starter for quickly creating a cluster, smart graphs, and satellite collections. Using these features with OrangoDB helps to ensure that operating in a clustered environment is fast and reliable. The goal of Smart Joins is to have the data involved in a join co-located on the same database server as the data it is joining. Smart Joins only work with the Enterprise Edition of OrangoDB, and this feature is specifically designed to help with cluster deployments. To realize the benefits of Smart Joins, a quick review of the architecture of a clustered environment with OrangoDB would be helpful. OrangoDB clusters consist of three main instances that serve specialized functions. These OrangoDB instances include coordinators, which serve as the front end of the cluster, agents, which serve as cluster supervisors and are in charge of procedures such as enacting the raft consensus, and finally, the database server, which actually houses the data. Of course, there are many more details to cluster architecture, and if you'd like to learn more, we offer a great cluster administration course, which I will link in the description. With that basic understanding of the cluster architecture, let's take a quick look at the process for when a request or query for data is made. When a query is sent to the cluster, its first stop is the coordinator. The coordinator parses the query and then decides which database servers need to perform which parts of the request. It sends off the request and then, once it gets back the data, it performs any further operations needed to fulfill the request requirements, and finally, the coordinator sends off the response to the initial query. A part of the decision-making process for the coordinator is deciding which database server to send requests to. It makes this decision by being aware of the data being housed on each server. The database servers consist of shards of data, which are portions of collections that are automatically distributed across all the database servers. These shards are created based on an attribute in each document. By default, this attribute is underscore key, but it is something that can be defined when the collection is created. The value of the shard key is hashed and then the document is distributed based on that hash. Choosing the shard key for your data is an important decision and we will continue to revisit this once we start exploring the example data in a moment. In this video, we'll be using the Instacart Online Grocery Shopping Dataset 2017, which is freely available to download from Instacart, and I have provided a link to the dataset if you'd like to follow along. The dataset includes orders for 200 million Instacart users. Instacart has detailed the different collections, a data dictionary, and their individual use cases in their official post, which I have also linked. To try and keep things simple for our example, we will only be using three of the CSV files provided from Instacart. Orders, products, and orders underscore products underscore prior. I will be using a cluster created on our upcoming managed service product, OrangoDB Oasis. The cluster has three agents, three DB servers, and two coordinators. I have created each collection and imported their data. These collections are just standard document collections and I have not added indexes and they are not optimized for smart joins. When I created each of the collections, I gave them nine shards, but I did not change anything else. I will supply the import statements, but I recommend waiting to do anything until we actually make the collections that will utilize smart joins. I'm just using these collections to introduce you to the documents in each collection and take a look at a query plan that is not utilizing smart joins. Our orders underscore standard collection contains documents with date specific information related to each order. This includes day of the week, hour of the day the order was placed, days since the prior order. These documents also contain the user underscore ID for the user who placed the order and the order number for that specific user and the actual order underscore ID. The eval underscore set attribute won't be relevant for our use case. Next, let's take a look at the order details documents. 
These documents contain information about the items in the order and other non-date specific information, such as the order in which the item was added to the cart. If this item had been previously ordered, the actual product ID, and the associated order ID. So if an order had seven items, then there will be seven documents in the order details collection, one document for each product. Lastly, the products collection contains product information, including its product ID, its name, and location in the store. All right, now that we have done the first bit of legwork, let's take a look at the query we want to run. For our example, I would like to be able to look up a specific order and return the user who ordered it, the day it was ordered, and the product name and ID for each item in the order. So our query will start with a lookup in the orders collection, looking for a specified order ID, and then we perform our first join by using an equality lookup on the order ID from the orders collection and finding all order details documents that have the same order underscore ID. For now, I'll focus on working with these two collections as this join will eventually be able to take advantage of smart joins. In the return statement, I will get the user ID and the day of the week the order was placed from the orders collection. And then I will return the order underscore ID and product ID from the documents found in the orders details collection. We know that these collections are not optimized in any way. So rather than running the query, let's run the explain to get an idea of what this might look like first. As you can see, the estimated calls is a lot and really wouldn't be feasible. If we were to run this query, the number of calls plus the number of documents it would need to hold in memory would likely consume all server resources and even more likely the query would time out. Even without smart joins, indexes can help out a lot here. To get a bit more realistic look at this, let's go ahead and add some indexes for order underscore ID to the orders and order details collections. This will help out a bit and should be enough to let us do a profile on the query, which will show the actual execution plan for when the query runs. Here's our profile with our new execution plan. Now that we have some indexes in place, this execution plan shows the steps required to complete the query and the number of calls that actually made back and forth. As you can see, just adding indexes really helped with a number of calls, but let's take a look at a few areas smart joins will be able to optimize even further. If you recall, the first thing that happens during a query is the coordinator takes the request and determines which parts of the request need to happen on the database servers. So for our first for loop, the only thing that is happening is we are filtering for the supplied order ID. This filter lookup needs to take place on the databases. So this is sent to all databases utilizing all nine shards as indicated here. Even though the indexes are utilized, it still takes these HTTPS calls being sent to find the document that matches that filter statement. This remote scatter gather process involves many network requests and depending on latency can add substantial time to each query. This back and forth between the coordinators and shards of the database servers has to happen for each for loop in the query. You can see something similar happening here with the order details lookup and you can see it is also needing all nine shards. This hopping between shards is a common distributed database problem and reducing the number of these network hops is important and using smart joins is one of a few tools that ArangoDB offers to reduce these hops. Now that we have an idea of the problem to be solved, we can take a closer look at how smart joins actually solve it. Smart joins solve a specific problem, which is when there is one or more collections with the same number of shards that have an attribute with matching values and queries that involve joining the data between these collections based on this attribute. In our case, this attribute is the value of order underscore ID. 
Even if the attribute name was different, the important part is that the values match. Smart Joins allows us to set up our collections and have them sharded together based on this attribute. So our documents with matching order IDs from both the orders and order details collections will be co-located on the same database server. So when we perform our lookup, rather than having to go back and forth between the coordinator, it will be able to find all of the necessary documents on the same server. Let's hop back into the web view to set this up now. The most important part of using Smart Joins comes with the creation of the collection. So if you already have a collection, you will need to create a new collection and import the data. The first collection will be the orders underscore smart collection. This is referred to as the prototype collection, as other collections will be distributed in the same way this one is. I will again give this collection nine shards, but this time I will set the shard key to be order underscore ID. The shard key needs to be the attribute whose value will match the attributes in the collections you intend to perform joins with. That's it for this collection. Next, we need to import the data for this collection, and I'll supply that import command for you as well. There's nothing unique to smart joins regarding importing the data. Now we can move on to creating the smart version of the order details collection. I will call it order underscore details underscore smart. In order to take advantage of smart joins, it needs to have the same number of shards, so nine. Its shard key also needs to be the attribute that has the matching values. So for us, that's order underscore ID. But now we need to click advance to get access to the distribute shards like option. This is what makes the magic happen with smart joins. We need to put in orders underscore smart here. This is what makes the order details documents be sharded to match our orders collection. We need to import the data into this collection. And let's go ahead and make sure this, the same indexes for these collections are on order underscore ID just like I did with the standard collections. Now we can hop back to the query and change the collections in the query from standard to smart. And let's take a look at the profile. Right away, you may notice that there are fewer steps in the execution plan. It went from 11 to seven. And if we look down in the optimizer rules, smart joins is now listed. So what is actually happening here? Well, the biggest call out from the standard join and the smart join is that we were able to remove the entire remote scatter gather stage. Instead, our coordinator was able to send the request to one server, and then only one shard was needed for each for loop. And importantly, these shards were each located on the same server, which is why this only needed to do one to two calls between the database and coordinator shown here. Compare this to our standard collection, which depending on the step needed up to 36 calls. Depending on your environment and latency, your query can run multiple times faster when using smart joins. This is great. We were able to reduce the network overhead for our query and in turn improve the query performance. We have one last bit of query to fulfill though, getting the product name. Getting the product name will be a little bonus for this video as it will use another feature offered by ArangaDB called Satellite Collections. For this, we will need one more join, this time with the Products Collection. This will filter for the product ID from the Order Details Collection documents that have matching product IDs in the Products Collection. This allows me to now add the product names in the return statement. If I execute this, you can see this really increased our query time though. 
This is because the query is back to having to do multiple hops across servers to get the different product names located on the different database servers. Satellite collections essentially copy the entire collection to each database server. And since the product's collection is small, it would be a good candidate for this. Using satellite collections is only really feasible for smaller collections like this and wouldn't make much sense for our other two collections as the storage space trade-off wouldn't be worth it. I will create a new collection named products underscore satellite. Make it a satellite collection. Add an index for product underscore ID and import the data. If you would like to learn more about satellite collections, please have a look at the link I provided in the description. Back in our query, we need to update the collection to be products underscore satellite. And now when we execute, it goes from 800 milliseconds to 44 milliseconds. Now our query joins data across three different collections in a clustered environment and returns all of the requested data in a fraction of the time it would have taken without smart joins. Smart joins are a solution that centers around the queries being made against your data and with a little bit of planning can substantially reduce network traffic and improve overall query performance. To learn more about clusters with ArangoDB, be sure to take a look at our wonderful Cluster Anatomy and Administration course. And we also offer a comprehensive query performance course to continue learning about performance with ArangoDB. We've also recently released a Fundamentals of ArangoDB course available on Udemy, which is completely free and linked below. Smart Joins is just one of the many new features coming with ArangoDB 3.5. Be sure to check out some of the other 3.5 feature introduction videos, including K Shortest Path, Sorted Views, Configurable Analyzers, Prune, and TTL Indexes. Thank you for joining me, and be sure to like and subscribe to this channel for more content from OrangoDB.